Hi, greetings. Welcome back. Clyde Branson here again. Um, on this short video, uh, I'm not going to make any flows. So I'm actually going to tie um, some hooks together, uh, eyed hooks and spain dead hooks, um, showing you how to use that knotless knot. And also a couple of loops. Um, there's, a, there's two ways of doing loops. Um, and the reason I'm, I'm going to show you this video is that uh, I've had a lot of discussions recently about um, hook tyres um, and what sort of tools to use. Well, I suppose I'm from the old school. I prefer to use my hands, um, you know, and especially, for example, if you lose a tool, <laughs> uh, especially on the riverbank and you, you can't do anything about it, you, you have to use your hands. And as I say, I go back to the old I, old days when I used to be able to, um, you know, tie uh, a size 32 hook behind my back as a party piece. I can't do it these days, mind you. <laughs> um, and I used to challenge people in my rep days when I was around the tackle shops. I used to say to, to a couple of the uh, anglers, I said, right, I'll do a competition. See who ties the quickest hook, either by a, a tool or by hand. And quite often I, I'd beat them. <laughs> and um, the thing is with the hand, at least you don't get little kinks on the line and things like that that you would with tools. Um, and once you've learned how to master it, then, you know, hey, saves you by one, doesn't it? Anyway, um, no further to do, I'm going to uh, start off, I think, uh, showing you how to tie a few hooks and then a couple of loops. And I've got one knot in particular joining two pieces of line together. And um, to me, as, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best knot um, that you can ever use to tie uh, hook, hook lengths onto your main line or even joining two lengths of line together. Um, it's got the minimum size knot and the maximum strength. So no further ado, let's crack on. Again, you form a loop in your hand. There's two ways to do it. Now, the quickest way is simply to grab the loop, make a, a long loop, and simply bring it back on itself and simply push it through the, the second loop that you formed. And if you do that twice, wet it, bring it up, and there's your loop ready for uh, attaching um, uh, your feeder or, or another loop or, or whatever um, means uh, you, you want to do. So just cut this off a second. Okay. Now that's, that's quite a strong loop. It's a very strong loop, but to make that um, knot even stronger, there's another way of doing it. And I'll show you. Let's cut this bit off. Right. So you get your line. You form your loop again, like uh, last time. Now, instead of going through once, what you do, you bring the loop back on itself. You twist, you twist that loop. You grab the loop and the second loop, you bring it back through the loop that you've, um, the first loop that you formed. Okay. If you do that, pull it tight together. See how that's, you no, know, that knot closing up on itself. Now that knot, just push out. That knot there is a smaller knot and it's actually a lot stronger. Uh, through tests, through spring balances, I've tried this knot over the years and I found that this knot um, is actually stronger than the uh, the other loop that I uh, created. Now, um, it might be a good idea to actually rewind this and look at it uh, a couple of times because um, you may have missed a little bit of the action. But it's basically forming a loop creating the loop, bringing it back through itself, uh, and then pulling it tight. And again, here you are, just pull that tight. Very strong, very strong loop indeed. Okay, here we go. First thing to do is um, make sure you get your piece of line, of course, your hook length line. You make a um, a loop you see that um, but then get the hook and put it in a loop so basically if you look at this I've made the loop and I put the uh, if you can see that okay now the next thing I do is hold it together and then I'll whip with the help of my two fingers my bottom two fingers gripping the line as I twist the line around the shank 
and the line together. Making sure that when I'm um, doing this, the line, the main line, is coming from inside the spade. Usually I do about eight or nine times. And when I think I've got a reasonable amount of line there, what I will then do is hold the spade and the line together, transferring um, uh, my hand to the uh, my right hand to the end of the tail, push it through the loop, like so, grip it, and now pull it together, and that then tightens itself up against the actual hook. Now, this stage now, what I'll do, I'll just with the help of my thumb, my fingernail, I'll push the knot up to the top of the spade and pull tight. It's a good idea to wet the uh, knot at this stage so you don't get no kinks. I know with a lot of hook tires you get like a kink on the top just above the spade but this method obviously you don't. Now the first thing you'll notice the line coming from inside the hook itself so the reason behind this of course is when you strike you strike so the hook actually um, if you like goes inwards in towards the fish rather than pull away. I uh, need to cut this little bit of tail off on the end there so there you are, not there and that's one of the best knots ever for tying spade ends. Okay now I'm going to show you how to tie an eyed hook which is almost basically the same sort of principle. What you do, you thread the line through the eye of the hook um, on the coming from the inside of the shank, pull in the tail, so then you create another loop similar to the spade end. Okay, so you've got your loop on, on the shank of the hook. So again, you pinch it together and the use of your fingers, I don't know if you can learn to do this, but it's quite simple after a while. You then twist the line around the shank. In this case, you don't need as many uh, twists. Usually half a dozen is fine. You then bring the tail back through the loop and you push it tight. And again, use the thumb and the, and the nail, push it up to the top of the hook. And again, just by Cut in a little bit of line off the tail off. Okay, again you're left with the hook and the line coming from inside the um, the eye. Again, ideal. So when you're striking, you're hooking into the fish. Okay, this is uh, a knotless knot. Basically, what I've done, I've tied a loop, a small loop. And I threaded through the the eye of the hook, so it's sliding. And what I'll do, I'll bring the loop up to the bottom of the the shank, and this is where obviously we put um, our uh, our bait. What I now do is twist it once or twice, three four times coming through the back end of the spade now not the inside of the spade the back end of the spade pull in tight so the line is coming from inside the hook and there you've got your loop and this is what we call a knotless knot um, by loosening it the knot you can slide the um, the hook up the line or down the line um, for your hair rig so um, that's about it this is very popular now on commercials now I use these on uh, rivers especially if I'm fishing luncheon meat uh, pellets and so on um, as I say so it's rewind the video uh, so you can see exactly how it's done again um, making your loop of course either way that you've already seen on the video um, Put the line through the the eye um, to the required distance where you want to put your hair rig, and then whip it, and then making sure the the tail end goes back 
at the back end of the spade uh, of the hook so as you can see the line finishes off on the inside of the hook there you are and that's how to tie a, a knotless uh, knot on the hook Okay, this is how I do the bolt rig for the feeder and for fe uh, lead fishing. So basically what you do, you put your attachment onto the line already, uh, the swivel, and bear in mind this swivel will then attach itself onto the uh, either the bomb or the feeder. So the first thing to do is place that onto the line, uh, so it's running, and then what you do, you come back from the tail end and you make a large loop. Okay, so basically you still got your feet, you still got your attachment on the line. So what you do, you bring in, you you make the loop as long as you want. Usually about 12, 14 inches is is plenty. Okay, so once you've done that, you then pinch it together. Okay, come to the top of the of the loop, which is about 14 inches away, and then you create the loop. Uh, you create a second loop, and you pass this through. Not once but twice okay and then once you've done that you just bring this through first okay you pull that tight you wet it wet the knot pull it through and that then creates we just tighten that up there you are, that creates a large loop so now you've got your loop and you've got your swivel now that will run along the loop if I show you like this see so that's basically running along the loop now obviously what you need to do here first of all just cut off this little bit of tail that you've got uh, left dangling okay let me just cut that off <clears throat> so that's off there right now what you then do you come to the bottom end again and you then just bring your swivel up your attachment where you're going to attach obviously your feet up but you bring it up slightly and you create another loop again twice through itself okay. and then a nice small loop so there you've got your loop now bring the swivel down so now you've got your first loop and you've got your, your longer loop now obviously with the attachment now you put your attachment you put this onto your feeder in this case i'm putting an open-ended feeder like so okay and there's your loop now obviously now what you you do on the on the small loop you tie your uh, hook length and uh, usually you start off with a couple of feet uh, you know three foot perhaps two and a half three foot depending on how the fish are feeding obviously you can alter that throughout the uh, fishing period whether um, to shorten it off sometimes or to even uh, lengthen it if the, if the the bites are shy then you obviously um you know have a longer length anyway so you tie that onto there now if i can uh, visually show you this so when you get a bite basically it pushes it through the feeder so that means that there's no resistance uh, uh, at all to the uh, top of the rod and it and obviously when you got feed in this in the um the feeder itself which you hold it firmly on the bottom uh, it makes a secure um 
um, hold on the bottom and then obviously when you get a bite it pushes it through the feeder and that's if it pushes it fast enough it's almost like a bull trick so it will actually the fish will hook themselves um obviously it can only go so far up the line so that saves it running all the way up the line and you're not putting any stoppers or shots um now this is one of the best methods that, uh, that i use when i come to feeder fishing bomb fishing or, or uh, other type of fishing. Um, you, this works extremely well if you're fishing, um, say, on the bottom of a river, a river um, and also obviously on still water as well, uh, where, of course, most of the fish will be feeding on the bottom anyway. Uh, yeah. Now, <clears throat> this time I'll show you quickly um, for attaching a uh, fixed um, feeder or, or a bomb or whatever you're going to use, um, simply put it through the swivel, of course, through the attachment. Then you hold the one line and you twist with the other hand and using your fingers and you twist this line around the main uh, rear line. Okay, then you pull that out, you bring it back and this and it forms a little loop on the top of the swivel so you simply push this through the loop you pull this tight now and that creates a tightening of the knot and that's a blood knot so what we do now is simply just cut that bit off there okay and that's your attachment Fishing lakes in particular, and you want to catch fish on the drop on the feeder, it's always a good idea. Instead of having a running um, line through the uh, through the swivel or the feeder itself, what you want to do is come up above the, the actual feeder and create a loop in the line. So I'll just do that with my finger just to show you. Okay, and you, what you do, you create a loop um, once and twice. Okay, so as you can see now we've got a loop, loop above the feeder, and on this loop now we shall put another loop uh, which is actually attached to a hook length. Now, the reason we I do that is so that if you're fishing on the drop uh, and you're using floating maggots, for example, to create a, a, a slow drop, then this is ideal because you can fish, um, depending on how uh, long your hook length is uh, say for example you're fishing a three foot hook length well you can actually get a three foot drop and uh, quite often and with this what i like about this sort of attachment is that once you uh, get a bite you're actually pulling um directly from the tip of the the rod so it, it, it you know before you actually pull the feeder sometimes so if you can imagine you know um after retrieve after casting retrieving it and you get a bite and you pull it you, you actually um having contact straight directly to the tip of the, the rod okay. okay now i'm going to show you how to tie uh, two pieces of line together um presumably your hook length onto the main uh, rear line or joining two lengths of line together um, to extend uh, the, le the line on your reel. Now, the first thing to do, you have your two lengths of line. Okay, so this is uh, presumably this one's to the reel, and this is your hook length or the uh, the extra line that you want to add. Now, simply put them together parallel. Okay, so you've got two bits of line, one going that way, one going that way. Good idea is to wet it so the line actually sort of sticks together. Now, all you have to do is create a loop and pass the line, uh, the hook length part of the line through, or the or your X line once and twice. Okay, and then pull that together, wet it, pull that together slowly, and there you are. You created 
a very very strong knot look at that i'm pulling it really hard there now all you have to do is pinch is obviously just cut off the little bits of tail if i just show you now now this knot um to be fair it was shown to me by a legend kevin ashurst uh, many years ago showed me this knot uh, and it's absolutely fantastic I used it all the time um, as you can see it's the smallest knot you can possibly get it's perhaps one of the strongest knots and uh, I use this all the time to attach two lengths of line together um, as I say he showed it to me once um, prior to that I always used to use loop to loop and uh, other various knots like blood half blood knots and blood knots but this knot um, is fantastic and uh, I've, I've used it ever since over 50 years now and uh, as I say um, it's never ever let me down so if there's one thing you've gleaned from the vi from this uh, short video is this knot here one of the best knots you can do and um, many years ago uh, what I used to do as well especially when I was uh, fishing um, uh, the waggler I actually cover the knot by putting a little um, shot on there you know to, to give that extra strength and that way then there's no knot at all uh, being retrieved through the water but even so as you can see that knot stands out um, uh, from itself and it's it's absolutely fantastic so rewind the video and watch how I've done it again and uh, try it next time you go fishing uh, this one is a typical uh, blood knot so two lengths of line, uh, you basically make two loops, okay, um, you pinch the, uh, the join together, you, you then whip the, uh, the line around the one side of it, usually three or four times, pass that back through the, the loop you just made, so you tighten that up slightly. Yeah, and now you're left with the other loop or the other piece of line. So again, you create some more whips around the line and you bring this back through the second loop. Okay, pull it tight. It's always a good idea to wet these knots as well when you're doing it, of course. Yeah, so you pull that together and that's that's a blood knot it's quite a nice strong uh, knot just tighten it up like that again a very small knot it's ideal for um you know for joining uh, two lengths of line together uh, again uh, just nip off the ends your blood knot very strong knot okay this one is um, a sliding knot this is where you tie a knot on the line uh, if for example you're using a sliding float um, where you want the, the float to slide up the line to a given depth in the water now first of all you need a length of line uh, now it's always a good idea to use a slightly stronger di diameter or a slightly larger diameter than your real line um, so anyway in this case I'm using the same size so just for um, uh, so you can see what I'm doing so first of all you've got your main length of line okay your, your real line then you need a little short bit, bit of line and what you do you create another loop okay and you hold it onto the line and what you do you actually have uh, you keep one parallel with the other with the other rear line and then with the um the spare one you twist it it's almost like as if you're whipping this back onto the uh, or the two bits of line together and once you've done that three or four times you then bring this back to the loop bring your tail back in, up into the loop you pull tight you get the two ends put them together and that creates a knot okay now that's a sliding knot that will run up and down the line okay 
so like that okay obviously a good idea is to um, to cut that off then so you've got two uh, two bits together okay so there's your there's your knot as I say that will slide up and down and to to um, stop it slipping the idea of, um, of the knot is to so you've got these two longer lengths you can sort of pull them tight and that creates uh, more friction on the line so it's less likely to slip you know, and that's quite firm there now um, it's always a good idea to actually put two knots together especially if you're using big uh, as like um, four or five six one shot floats because obviously the constant buffing of the knot might actually move the knot but if you put two together it will actually hold it firm okay so there you go there's a couple of knots uh, i use them all the time it's never let me down um i've won quite a few matches and uh and i seem to catch a lot of fish so hey um rewind rewind the video watch it again and again until you, you can master it um as long as your eyes are good uh, you should be able to uh, do them um, no problem at all unfortunately I have to wear glasses these days, so it does slow me up a bit. Uh, but I've got to give the youngsters a little bit of a chance, haven't I? See you again. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>